What's up? What's up? What's up? All right, we're back again. My name is Mike Worth. It is October 19th, and uh, y'all, we are live again. And uh, this morning, we got Pretzel Radio on the tunes. Um, I love filling out my uh, daily copyright <laughs> clearance notice for uh, using Pretzel Radio, but uh, I keep coming back to it. I love it. It's great for streams. keeps me going. So... Um, shout out to that real quick and today friends we are going to be painting a bowl of matzo ball soup and uh, if you've never had matzo ball soup before it is to die for it is this uh, ball uh, that is made out of uh, matzo meal right wheat and all sorts of other things I make a gluten-free version at a cornmeal um, actually using um, arepa uh, cornmeal which is like kind of the best and you just you boil it in like chicken stock and you season it with so many great things and uh, yeah today we're going to put together a bowl of that so all right let's uh let's jump in here all right I've got a <clears throat> I've got a document here we're going to go up to the info of the uh, of the canvas here we're going to go to canvas information we're going to see that we got this thing set to um, a physical width of 24 by 18 300 pixels per inch right or dpi dots per inch which is the real life translation of uh, how many little color chips you have that make up your image right so this is great this is going to be a high res doc so because i'm working high resolution i'm limited on the amount of layers that i can use so um, we're going to learn how to paint uh, in a high res environment which is like pretty great so yeah i got my document set up here first and foremost i love to switch over to a nice dark blue just get into the zone for myself because all my work is oh let's see i gotta go background color oh we'll switch over here the background color i want to get in the zone of this of my work here right i like to just drop it blue all right yeah oh yeah okay so with now the background blue my uh wonderful at night scenario that that whole thing that i'm doing here is like totally coming up so um Y'all, welcome, welcome, welcome to the stream. Mike Worth here. Um, we are rocking and rolling today, making this happen. And um, yeah, so we're doing a matzo ball soup and uh, I'm really excited to, pow. Here's my drawing. So with anything, I always like to make a pencil drawing before I get started. So here you can see, I've got this uh, pencil drawing here. It's the little guy right in the space and uh, I took a picture with my iPad and now I'm ready to rock and roll in this space here, make this uh, whole jam work out. So very excited. All right, so there we go. You can see we've got now um, the drawing and what I'm gonna do is check out my layer scenario. Remember I did make my background blue and it's now back to the color of the paper with the drawing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, click on the little N here, which is the blending mode for normal. We're gonna slide this opacity down so that this is now much lower, right? Because we're gonna use this drawing as like a reference. I'm gonna uh, sketch all these things and start to now digitize them and make color flats, right? Outline them first, fill them with the fill, and then I have like a field, a big shape silhouette of pixels that I can use to my advantage uh, when starting to now shade and stenciling and masking and all sorts of stuff. That's really the bomb of why we wanna do that. Okay, but like I said, we are working in high res, so we only have really two layers to make this whole thing really happen. Okay, so what we're going to look at is we are going to hit the plus, right? And you can see it adds a new layer, thank goodness. Woo! But if I go to make another one, the alert comes down and says, hey, the maximum of two layers has been reached on this high res dock. So, yeah, like chill it out, Mike. <laughs> but that's just it, is that like... <clears throat> Procreate as a tool is wonderful, but like it has its boundaries and limitations. Just like you can't open a super, you know, 40 gigabyte file in a Photoshop um, on your computer, um, you know, with a thousand layers and whatnot, or a big video file or something like that. Sometimes there's just capacity. So that's all, it's, it's, it's a fact. Okay, so uh, when I get started here, I like to go to my brushes and go to my Mike's palette here. And then I go to my everyday round brush, my favorite, okay? It's like my pencil and um, it just helps me uh, go through the process of sketching from uh, to the computer, right? So that I'm, I'm really feeling like I can now get this into a great digitized place. Also, friends, also, uh, it might be a little difficult to see here, but I got these colored tips for my pencil. 
and this is going to help me with the grip, right? I've been drawing and it's been like, ooh, a little bit of uh, ice skates sometimes. So now I'm off the ice skates. Really good. And uh, cool. Let's jump into it. So we're going to be making, as you can see, there's a spoon, there's a bowl, uh, the matzo ball, the soup in there, and then like a background and some stars and a moon. That kind of stuff is happening. So um, yeah, let's go with like a this kind of pencil right now and then make it real skinny. All right. And then just we'll start to have at it here and start to think about what we want to do. So um, I have some shapes in here that I know I'm going to want to have be really nice. But um, yeah, you know, let's start with the with the fun part with the matzo ball. And I think what I'm going to want to do here with the matzo ball as I'm just sort of capturing it, right, is really think about like how much of it I want to have shown uh, in the bowl, right? And I'm I'm going for one matzo ball, yo. <laughs> Hopefully that's cool with you guys. And we're going to do a couple of carrots and some celery. Okay, so this will be a fun piece. But, you know, it'll be based on a lot of shapes and a lot of things that, like, will make this uh, really look good. So, yeah. Okay. Moon time. The moon isn't going to really be an element element. I don't know why I really drew it, but it's okay. Um, I mean, it's so that, like, you know, we can put away this, uh, this drawing and start to uh, have at the artwork, you know, unto itself. Yeah, cool. All right, so we got the spoon in there. And... We're going to get this matzo ball bowl. All right. Now, I think what I'm going to do is I made the matzo uh, ball bowl like super big in the drawing. And uh, yeah, I don't know if I want to do that. I think maybe I might want to make it so that um, the, the matzo ball appears a little larger. So I'm going to make the ball a little smaller, right? So maybe our new dimensions. I like where it is right here, but I think also I'll cut it back so that the, the matzo ball will the matzo ball um, the bowl will be crested by the matzo ball so by doing this here i've effectively like changed the scale or the perception of the scale of the matzo ball right now mind you it's like we have the moon to see but like we don't stand next to the moon every day it's just big or <clears throat> at the most it appears is like maybe two inches in the sky like truly from any human's relative position um but the spoon is really kind of the giveaway, right? And like our spoons looking like a kid's tablespoon, it's, it's all good. So we'll, we'll work that out, I know. Um, but yeah, let's, let's start to now get the contours of the bowl. And uh, yeah, I think I might make this bowl kind of a little more on the trim side, just because we have such a, uh, all right, we took it down in size. I don't want to make it too chunky. All right, switch over, switching over to eraser. I'm going to use some of the eraser now to just clean up a lot of this kind of uh, explorative line, right? I like to, those lines are not confident, you know, they're, they're explorative. So they're trying to find where the right line is, right? So that's what I do when I sketch is I draw lots of lines to see what it is that I want. And that's kind of the purpose of sketching is to show your brain what it thinks it sees in your imagination and then go, oh, cool. Yeah, I guess that is cool. Or, oi, what was I thinking? That looks so much better in my head than it does right here. Um, I don't know about you all, but do you feel that way? I constantly am, am having great ideas in my head. And then when I put them to paper, I'm like, Whew, back to the drawing board, Mike. It's just how it goes. That's the process. That's what I love about the process. Live it. Cause there's like great ideas to be had. And when you have a breakthrough, I mean, that, that doesn't like happen once and go away. I mean, you have that breakthrough forever as like a, a way to think about um, how to make something successful. So I was thinking, I've been looking at a lot of uh, soup posters lately and um, a lot of them are trying to show the material in the bowl like above See, and actually, I think, here, I think I need to be a little bolder here and come on back and say that we're going to have this thing crest a little higher. Yeah, again, more explorative lines. They, they got to crisscross, right? Explorative lines. Figure out where it is. What's the right 
what's the right geometry? I'm gonna, I can erase all that. That's the beautiful part. That's the thing about you know the digital stuff is that like this this stays uh, a la prima, right? It stays wet all the time, like forever and ever and ever. So it's interesting that the artwork can live in infinite development, right? Or infinite changeability, flexibility. Oy, that's bad because it's like, is a work ever done? All right, we're still going to have to play with the shape because matzo balls actually are like lumpy and we're going to, right now, it just looks like an egg, I know, but um, we're going to, yeah. Okay, the other thing we need is uh, from a geometry kind of standpoint is this, right? We need to show like now, like what's the depth of the liquid in the bowl and loop that stuff around. So we can start to think about that, right? Again, these are explorative lines. I, I wasn't trying to clean everything up yet. Still trying to see what's up, right? Right? And like if this drawing will, will stand on its own, if we're going to like really feel like this is actually somewhat something decent. Okay. So what's up, what's up, what's up, everybody? Mike Worth here. Got some pretzel uh, radio on, pretzel rocks radio. Wonderful royalty-free streaming. Mm. Right? Free for streaming, commercial use. I am here today. You've joined us for a digital session, and we're going to be doing um, a drawing on the iPad with Procreate of matzo ball soup at night. Okay, so if you know my work, uh, I'm going to teach a lot of stuff, talk about how uh, these drawings are made, and uh, we're going to be here for about an hour, hour and 15. And um, yeah, I'll show you brushes, all sorts of fun things, and just getting this ready for production. And then I'm going to push this high res file out to my uh, page, right, to my store, and then make this available as a canvas print. So um, that's a wonderful thing about this tool is that like it's an exploratory tool and it's a high, um, high output production, high quality, high resolution production tool. So that's pretty dope. Okay, so what we're doing really here is we're playing with this idea of the soup bowl and the horizon line and um, you know where, where this stuff kind of lives. Let's make sure the horizon line is even, right? <laughs> and uh, yeah, we've so far kind of created this like that, you know, that little kind of setup going on. And like, I know like there's going to be a signature down here. I always sign my name in pink and that really pops off the page. Um, and then I'm probably going to want to put, you know, let's leave that there, right? So, uh, uh, name. And then uh, we'll probably want to put some uh, stars in the sky, you know, with uh, setting this stuff up. I think, you know, it creates little nice balances in the composition. Maybe we even do one here. Well, it seems like this is a lonely part of the sky here now. Yeah, maybe, 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 maybe. All right. Um, oftentimes, I may even think, well, let me do a constellation. But then I got to go look up a constellation <laughs> and think about that. And I'm like, well, what do I want to align the constellation of matzo ball soup with? Well, that would have to be probably when we eat matzo ball soup, right? Um, which would be, uh, you know, around the Passover time. So I think that would be spring. Um, yeah, and because the lunar calendar moves differently than the the, uh, the Gregorian calendar, right, that we have uh, now, then um, yeah, that would that would be different. Okay, um, <laughs> see what else. Um, oh, I also thought lately too. I've been I've been excited about this. Is like um, adding a mound of salt. I've been reading lately a lot about salt. And uh, just been kind of fascinated with it. It's it's a, it's like an element in a lot of stories. And I thought, oh, it'd be fun to add like a mound, a lump of salt. And I thought, you know, this is a food item, super appropriate. But the idea of salt is really interesting, right? So, um, you know, if you know the Dead Sea, um, if you know the story of, of Lot's wife, uh, I forget her name. Instead of saying Lot's wife, we should say her name. Um, if you know her name. Please write that in the chat. That would be like super helpful. What's up, everybody? Welcome. Um, chat is popping. Uh, I think I got my alerts working. I think um, I'm trying to get all good at that, all that, so I can you know proceed into the world, the world of Twitch, right, and streaming. So welcome, y'all. Um, this is an exciting thing that we're doing here. We're doing some some non-traditional Judaica, right, which is Jewish art. Um, talking about Jewish things, Jewish objects, 
and uh, we're having fun here. We're doing this matzo ball soup uh, element here, which I'm putting together, just making this sketch happen. And I'm very excited because I now have these wonderful grip tips for um, my iPad pencil, which makes flowing around really, really nice. So on the pad surface. Okay, so as we started off here, uh, I originally had this drawing and this drawing, as you can see, right, came right from my sketch pad from this, this piece of paper here. Boom, 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 boom. And I always like to do a drawing uh, on paper ahead of time just to sort of, you know, get it going. I, I just call me a traditionalist in that way. But um, I was uh, brought up before there was, you know, iPads and computers and all this stuff to make art happen. You had to do it the, the hand way. And um, yeah, you know, my... My dreams were always bigger than my production skills, so I always uh, I learned early from teachers like and from friends like draw it out really really make have it make sure that like when you see your idea you're like yeah right and um, you know that it's when you're ready to share it with the world that it feels really good so anyway I like to always start on paper and, and pen I feel most comfortable there it's it's a low investment and I can always kind of check it keep it up you know anyway. So now we've got it digitized. I went from uh, the sketch layer, I traced out what I have and I'm laying out and composing <clears throat> all of the elements that I wanna use in the page. And I'm thinking about kind of where, sorry, where all this stuff should go. And um, because we're working in a high resolution document, that's 300 pixels per inch, 300 dots per inch, we need to um, understand that we're gonna have a maximum of two layers to our, at our disposal to do the art. So we have to be really like, careful with how we work. So we're going to be using a lot of selections today. And uh, yep, what we're going to do is uh, now, since we're, we're good with the drawing, like cool. Oh, I guess maybe one more thing we should do here is, uh, yeah, let's, let's just think about right quick, uh, just kind of like what a, uh, uh, a piece of celery, right, would look like. And uh, yeah, I was crunching on some celery, celery the other night. And I was thinking, man, it'd be fun to to doodle out because it's got that like chasm kind of going down the middle right really fun that vegetable let's make sure this line more exploratory lines yep boom 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 right texture on that um a carrot chunk carrot chunks when you like cut them like this it has like this wonderful spiral in it and wow what beautiful vegetable that is okay so yeah, we're just gonna play and then, you know, I'll, I'll probably put little bits of uh, parsley, you know, other spices, salt, peppercorn, you know, we'll, we'll have fun with the texture like once that's in the mix. And I think uh, y'all, this is like, this is kind of shaping up to be a pretty fresh, whew, pretty fresh. Um, there we go, let's mix that up real quick. Uh, matzo ball soup here which will be really fun and really nice. So, man, I'm getting hungry for it now. All right, cool, good. I'm glad we just looked at that drawing like one more time. It just helps to consult, you know, your initial thoughts and like, don't stray from what you're doing. You know, you, you had those ideas, but as you're working on them and you see, like I did here, you know, let's make the, ball, the bowl smaller so that the matzo ball appears larger. And I think like that, that served me well. So now we're done with this. We're gonna swipe to the left on that layer and we're gonna say delete, okay? reason is we need that other layer to keep working on what we're doing okay so all right so we're gonna start to now like uh, fill this in and do the things we need to with it uh, based on this sketch and this drawing and you'll see you know how that's gonna go uh, right now so all right so let's good look for a good matzo ball color uh, matzo balls are like kind of like a chicken golden chicken orange good color like that you know but fading to kind of a pale uh, almost sand color, almost like hummus. That is um, very similar in color to hummus. Uh, the, no coincidence there. It's just two different things, just how the way it is. Okay, and we're gonna uh, continue to use the everyday round brush because the everyday round brush now as a uh, brush, when I go big, you can see, oh, it's a nice big fill. Okay, so like what we wanna do here is we're gonna try and come in and shape out a matzo bowl as if it was in the water, the water, the soup. Okay, <laughs> this is a ma massive matzo ball, y'all. It's a really good one, but that's the thing is that we want it to be like a one big flat, okay? And while it's this big flat, it's gonna serve us well um, 
to uh, to use for selections. That's like the whole point is that like this becomes a nice selector. Okay, cool. I, I'm playing with it and y'all, we're going to have, oh, and, and this is now a good time to think about like, because I'm playing with shape and just the different kind of ways it goes that um, I'm going to add little lumpies to it in a kind of semi-rhythmic way. Because the matzo ball is really a, uh, it's an odd shape and no two are alike. Okay, and then, you know, along the bottom, we don't need it to be really as lumpy because we're going to have um, a, uh, we're going to have water effects, like, cutting into there, so that way it'll look like the matzo ball is truly in the liquid, okay? So, ha ha ha, nice. It looks a little bit like a sheep, I know, but y'all, this is, this is my style, right? Cartoons with chiara scuro, um, like, three-dimensional life, right, from, uh, Ancient Renaissance techniques. Shading and fading. Shading and fading. Mm. Good morning, good morning, good morning to y'all. Today is October 19th, and we are rocking and rolling. We're um, creating a bowl of matzo ball soup today. Um, and I'm Mike Worth, and we are uh, making this happen. So I'm, I'm now doing what's called the color flat, okay? And uh, yeah, I'm doing this right on my layer, so... Uh, Oy vey. <laughs> what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to finish the other flats on a layer above just so I can keep some of the elements like separated because I painted over my carrot and whatnot, but it's all good. So here, let's, let's do the carrot. Let's kind of bring it back and reclaim it. Here we'll get like a nice orange. There we go. You know, when, when carrots get saturated with the, with the soup water, they, uh, they really start to turn like a, you know, a nice intense orange. And uh, yeah, we just cut back in front of this. And it's just, you know, we have stacked elements and I want to shade all this stuff. So by putting this stuff now on a layer in front, it's going to allow me to like shut it off, shade the matzo ball soup, you know, all that stuff and everything. All right, and we'll do the same um, for the celery. We're going to make that really something nice to happen. And uh, I'm going to try and go over those lines like as much as I can, but I'm going to have to redraw celery and I just, I drew that from off the, off the head from my imagination. I didn't look at a piece of celery here while I was doing it. Sorry, y'all. Um, because I did earlier, I was checking out uh, some celery while, um, that's a nice little lockup of foods. Oh, love it. Love it. Love it. Beautiful. Okay. Now, um, the bowl, I'm going to look for, yeah, I was thinking about doing something that was kind of like, um, uh, Delft wear, right? Which is like white, uh, porcelain, really bond white. And then it has the blue painting stuff on it, which I thought was really, really nice. So we're going to do something like that. And I'm going to look for a, uh, kind of a whitish gray. I don't want to quite go like pure white. I'm going to go for like a, uh, just a lightish gray, you know, for the bowl. Give it the real authentic kind of reality look. If it was bond white, then I couldn't do any lighting effects. That's why I don't go full black and full white because I leave those for lighting and super shadow effects, right? If I need to, to go there. So, all right, we're going to get in all the facets of the bowl, um, going right now. And, uh, let's see here. Yeah. All right. We'll do this front part. This complicated piece a little bit, but it's really just, I have to think about stacking, right? Like all this is really just about stacking the shapes and I'm trying to just keep with my, you know what? I'm going to try this. I'm going to bring this all the way around and hold it. <gasps> Sweet. Y'all, if you've never um, played with uh, procreate to see that, like there is a, uh, a drag and hold feature that lets you like make these really nice shapes. It'll like uh, create a, a vector, almost like a Bezier curve, a perfect geometric shape of like what you're trying to do. So here, let's let's try here with the with the bottom rim of the bowl. Here, let's come like this, come around, just 
steady as she goes. And then we hold it. Ugh. That's it, right? Cool. So now we're seeing that like we can, uh, you know, quickly create with the computer these uh, wonderful little fun drawing things. And I just closed up that little bit. I don't know if you saw, but I just went like blip, blip. And that little close up there now allows me to take and procreate this little dragger and dropper and just fill in that space. And you see that like we've got now that nice, beautiful uh, face in the area. And that's really important because again, we're trying to do this um, layout where we've got all of the, um, uh, the kind of large areas that we want to shade and highlight and mess with all set up already with uh, a nice fill because the fill is going to allow us to create a fast selection right in the mask. Hmm. Quick while to break. So again, my name is Mike Worth. Welcome to the stream. Uh, say what's up in the chat. Give us a subscribe, follow us, uh, jump to us on Instagram. Uh, you can check out uh, my website, MikeWorthArt.com, where we have our wonderful shop, and you can get merch of mine. And I am here to create some amazing, wonderful, cultural, hipster Judaica, as it's been told to me. <laughs> but some non-traditional Judaica, a, a, a way into the Jewish experience, right, in the 21st century. So um, through really awesome pop art, right, like this wonderful landscape of... of, uh, of uh, fun things, right? Of celebratory spaces. We, we love our cartoons and uh, we love our pop art. So I'm playing around here with procreate and creating a bowl of matzo ball soup. One of the most amazing, amazing foods, Jewish foods you've like ever had in your entire life. And uh, oy, the day you eat it, you're like so famished. So you're just so excited to have it. And uh, yeah, it's a welcome uh, relief after a day of fast. Okay, I'm going to get this uh, light blue now, and I'm going to use this to just to start to think about my. And I said earlier that I wanted my spoon to be a little more on the pointed side because I was looking at a spoon earlier and I was like, hey. So, um, you know, a lot of artists wonder too and ask, uh, how do you draw stuff so well, right? Or, or wow, what a, what a unique way to capture that sort of thing. Like, where, you know, where's that come from? And like, I like to really just be straight up and say, I do studies, right? I like to do um, what's called a maquette or like a, a test drawing of stuff before I do it. Because like, I don't know everything in my head. I just don't, I'm a human, so. The stuff that I have sat and practiced, I get really good at. Just like you can learn to play an instrument and it's no problem. You can pick it up or ride a bike. You know, we all have these skills that are like automatic at a certain point. So you can make this stuff automatic if you wish. Um, it just has to, you know, you got to put in the time and just, can you give yourself 15 minutes to stretch out before a race? Could you give yourself 15 minutes to stretch out before a drawing, right? Or a painting? And I think yes, right, is the answer. Um, so, you know, if you're, if you're like, man, I'm terrible at this, sit and draw hands for 15 minutes if you're unsure. Sit and draw spoons for 15 minutes if you're unsure, right? It's like, it's all a process. And you're still going to learn and get things wrong while you do it. So it's like, you know, roll with it. That's, that's the name of the game is roll with it. You know, um, I know the process can be really emotional and like can throw us for a loop, especially if life is crazy already. So... Um, you have control here. You're, you're in charge. You're the commander of the ship when it comes to the creative process. So, you know, why aren't you making it as wonderful and as easy for yourself as possible? Okay, so here, we need to uh, finish the bowl. We're going to uh, uh, sampler. We just click the sampler, the color sampler, on the side. And we're going to finish this bowl. And here, let's see if I can get that to be clean. Nice. Oh, and I forgot too. Yeah, you can do this. Here, here, here. I'll show you. Let's bring that around. Okay, cool. As once it's like that, I'm able to actually bend it and like treat it like a vector, which is like a whole lot of fun. I think now that I, here, let me just back up. I, you know, you get a bunch of undos in this software, which is really great. So yeah, we're just gonna back up to this part and redo those now to where, and let's get the color again, boom. And we're gonna redo those parts so that way it, it's clean. I, I, 
thought I could hand draw it, but you see my little wompy wavy lines in there, and that's, I don't want that. Okay, so here, let's get this to this point. Sweet. Can you see that now? I can bend this line. It's like, oh my god. That's amazing. Sweet. And then, yeah, you see I can come in and just do the fill. And I'll clean that edge of the bowl. Here, let's get in on that. You can see the zoom ability is amazing. Whoop. So we'll try to try to have that meet. There we go. And just kind of blend in the thickness. Sweet. Sweet. Right? And now we'll do the other side again. I know I had done that already, and it's like, why, Mike, why? But I'm going to get better at it. That's why. Wicked. Okay. And we're going to come around. And loop to the top. A. Okay, cool. And the shape is closed. You can see the white is filled on that. So that means now this pixel space, here we go, is ready to fill just like that as well. And that's, uh, that's fantastic. So let's just clean these little bits here. Dope. Okay. Hey, hey. All right. Really good. And uh, yeah, we're, uh, we're starting to come into our own here now. We got the different pieces. I got to do the liquid. That's like its own face. I got to do the uh, back rim of the bowl. And then, of course, the background and stuff like that. But we're just putting together these elements first and foremost. Oh, it looks like I went back kind of too far. Um, oh, it's because, uh, yeah, I uh, got rid of my spoon fill by accident. So let's just get that back. Cool. I just, I wanted that more pointy shape. Uh, maybe that's too pointy. We'll, we'll play with it. But let's get the body of the spoon here, the kind of the neck. All right, and it's got that kind of bend that I wanted in there. And let's give you a little more body. And cool. Good. So you see now we're starting to get um, the different fill areas, and that's really the most important stuff, is that, like, this thing has, a, has different fills. Because here, here's the deal. Here's why I keep saying it's so incredible. So you see that automatic on the bottom there? That setting now allows us to touch on that and select that whole area because it has continuous pixels of the same value because it's a big fill, right? So that means I can select just it, right? Like that, ooh, and just paint that part. Ooh, 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 it's fresh. So I really love it. Okay, so we're gonna do this, all right? I like that I have the two layers because I need to focus on the matzo ball and like the different facets and that sort of thing. And this is all good. So everything's still really wonderful. Um, what I want to do is let me turn off that selection. I'm actually going to come to the matzo ball layer and I'm going to, I wish I had painted the matzo ball first, but it's all good. Here's what we're going to do. Watch. We're going to do, turn on the selection. We're going to go to select the matzo ball and we're going to say invert. Okay. So what this means now is that anywhere but the matzo ball in that layer is a place I can paint. So it's gonna nicely make that work. So here, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So let's get this color like this, but I'm going to um, bend it towards blue. Like this, okay. And uh, what I'm gonna do here, okay, just make sure I'm on that layer. Good, good, good. Okay, watch this. So watch, ha! It keeps that edge real nice. That's what I wanted. And just let it loop this way. And we're painting that interior of the bowl. And I'm doing this with like an exaggerated um, powder blue color. Because often powder blue is a good shadow color for white um, in, a, in a subtle way. And that's what I want. I, I, I got inspired by this because I saw um, WPA posters do this. And WPA posters are the Works Public Administration, and this was a, um, a poster movement for the U.S. government 
in uh, the uh, during the Great Depression uh, and that era, right? Probably even the 20s, they had uh, works or works progress administration. Sorry, uh, but these things are amazing. They're they're like national parks posters. Um, uh, electricity is coming to your neighborhood posters. R really good stuff, you know. Attempting to be persuasive for the time. Okay. So here, now watch, we can turn off this selection. You can see that artwork's still in the same layer. So here, like that's, those two live together in the same spot, but now we have that going on. So we're gonna be erasing and cleaning and fixing and all that stuff, but it's gonna start to really start to turn into the, all these fills next to each other, right? And uh, that's, that's what we want. So, okay, so now what we'll do is we're gonna wanna paint the surface of the liquid, right? So we're gonna go and again, with the ribbon here, automatic, turn on the matzo ball, and it does also the, um, the, uh, uh, the background. That actually did more than I wanted. You can uh, lower the selection threshold here, you can see. I'll turn that off, watch, I'll turn it back on. And you can see it then, it, it, with threshold, you can select more items, right, in, in the threshold. You can say, I want, uh, uh, you know, uh, 10,000 or 50% uh, more pixels than what's there. So as you turn on the selection, you can slide left and right. It adjusts that, but then you have to make the selection again. So watch. So I'll come here now. All right. So I think I set it to like 30%, which is where I wanted it on the target. And um, that's going to do that. And then also I'm going to tap. Um, well, cool. All right. It, uh, well, no, that's not what I want actually here. Let's, let's turn the selection back on. Let's slide it down some. Let's go like 10, 9%. Yeah, that's good. Okay, and then we'll go matzo ball, that guy, that guy. Good, all right. It was doing the blue and the white, which was a little too much of a selection because I wanna cover that those white pixels. Had it included them in the selection, I wouldn't have been able to paint over them, but it's my sketch. So I wanna go over them as I go. So here we go. We're gonna find now a nice, beautiful chicken color. And uh, we're gonna get like a gold, like a nice, you know, golden consomme soup right? Like that chicken powder stuff. Really amazing. Uh, broth. Oh, uh, sorry. Back to this. We'll do it again. Selection again. Matzo ball. Boom. This. What I wanted to do the step before was I wanted to hit invert. Okay. Because now I'm using the selection space of the matzo ball and the, um, the inner rim of the bowl. But I want to trap all that inside with the liquid and the other things. And remember, our carrots and celery are on a layer above. So we're in good shape. We worked a little bit out of order, but not not terrible, not terrible. Okay, so we're gonna go. We're gonna say, uh, now we'll paint, and uh, we're gonna paint in this, let's get this, let's make this a little more, a little more on the orange side, right? It's just like, I want this to be rich soup. I want even as like a, see that now? So because I am made the matzo ball and the rim of the bowl a selection, it now allows me to just kind of paint, and you'll notice um, the bowl front and the vegetables are on a different layer than what I'm doing. But if I was painting this for real, yo, y'all, sorry, <laughs> um, can't take the kid out of the street, you can absolutely uh, know that you should be painting in like sections. Uh-oh, I don't know what happened there. Painting, it, going from back to front, right? Like this is a real kind of traditional method where you want to like think about those sections. So I would have painted the, the soup bowl for uh, liquid first, then the blue, then the matzo, then the veggies, uh, then the white, right? The, the bowl itself. But because we have selections, we can do this all day, right? And it's nonlinear. What I really love is that this reminds me of when I was a, uh, a college student in the 90s, uh, I would take airbrushing courses. And that was how we had edited photos. You would print photos, right, on matte paper, and then you'd go in with gray or watered down paint and you would soften things or highlight things, right, on black and white. And, like, um, it was incredible. I mean, I didn't know how, like, wow, how do people really do that? So we learned some traditional mechanical paste-up methods, as they used to call them. And then, um, yeah, you know, the computer was like, wait, you can do that, like, just with by drawing a shape, and it's there? No tape, no glue, no masking fluid? Oh, my God, yes. It was instant and cheap. So, like, you got to know that for me... This is like electric guitar, um, the computer. It really was like, whew. I felt like I was like living in the Tron movie when I was a student. It was cool because things were changing so rapidly and they had been way more mechanical and chemical prior to uh, the digital age. But 
the more I do this stuff, it's like, the more I see like, wow, we still need the analog process. It's really important that we have things that uh, touch the other senses besides just seeing, you know, like uh, Instagram doesn't have touch and smell and taste, you know, so like we can't get the full experience of things. All right, so this is looking good. We have that uh, that now set up, and as we see, here, turn off the selection. Uh, that that's what that looks like, right? Is like the layer behind, and I'm masking it with the layer in front, and that's what's going on, right? So our matzo ball soup's coming together really nice. I'm trying to like get all the elements together, and then that way I'm going to sandwich um, the two layers, right? The the liquid and the matzo ball, which I just called here. We'll rename it. We'll call it the matzo ball by the way there's like 12 ways to spell matzo so just if you're if you're uh seeing that and you're going mike just know it's we get it <laughs> shorthand right matzo slang that's it that's what we're gonna do all right and then this is the uh the bowl veggies right I, i'm only able to work in two layers y'all because i'm working in a high-res document right take a look at this canvas information you'll see 300 dpi high res, right? I, my goal is to be able to print this onto a canvas. I really, really want to do that. So, okay. All right. We're going to keep it rolling. Keep it rocking. Cool. All right. So we got most of the elements down here. I'm feeling really good about this. I think actually even, um, we can flatten these. Let's do it. We're going to merge. Uh, well, let me do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll just keep merging down. I'm going to cover up elements and things. All right. So now this is all one thing and the reason I said okay to this is because I can do this I can trap out just the parts that I need and like that's dope right I, I really I'm, I'm excited about that okay uh, and check this out now so I had a problem before with the uh, with the um, the bowl rim and the coverage so watch I'll go automatic I'll choose the matzo ball I'll say invert zoom in a little bit there and now I'm I, it's like I've masked off the matzo ball and I'm gonna now paint and make sure I got it right. And it's thin enough. Yeah, oh, oh, too thick. Back one. Okay. Check this out. Yeah, that's not what I want. All right. There's no uh, like fun geometric way to do it. So um, I'm just, yeah, we're getting these edges clean. That's what I really just wanted was that like these, these edges look good here. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Can't go wrong with clean edges, friends. I'm uh, constantly on the clean. And then I'll fix the matzo ball itself. I can even do that right now. So here, I'll, I'll click and hold these. We'll get the selection tools back. I'll say invert again. Okay, actually, let's just do this. We don't need to, to do that because um, we're painting on top. There's no way, we don't need to trap it. Okay, we'll get the yellow for the matzo ball and then we'll paint that back. Cool, 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 cool. Little selection artifacts in there, but nothing that'll really damage the print in that whole thing. Okay. Uh, yep. We want to start to think about getting rid of um, unnecessary background elements here and stuff. I got to cut into this. Oh boy, oh boy, Mike. What is cool is the uh, eraser will also follow that fun those lines, yeah. Fun lines, fun lines. Dope. Okay, uh, well, boy, oh boy, Mike. I don't know why I didn't erase that earlier. I didn't think about it, my bad, y'all. Before I merge these, I should have got rid of some of this underdrawing for some of this because now I got to cut this stuff out, but it's all fine. I mean, I'm able to um, clean up these edges somewhat, take control, just, you know, QC, right? QC, quality control. 
quality control. Okay, cool. I have a good sense of where this is going. <laughs> so. Sweet. Okay, so now what I want to start doing is uh, thinking about the, uh, the background. So I'm going to make a new layer, and I'm going to then rearrange it by clicking and holding and letting it go. And then this is going to be my background layer for a while. And uh, yeah, I just want to... Oh, I'm erasing on the background layer when I... Or the... This is going to be the background style layer, not the background color layer, right? You can see that's giving us that blue. So, all right. So on here, it matters not. We're going to now go to... We're going to switch a color, and we're going to sample the background. And we're going to make it just slightly royal. Okay, royal blue. And then we're going to go to back to my brush palette, and we're going to see Mike's Flow, uh, uh, flow Field Brush Shader. My One of my favorite brushes that helps me get through doing all this, like to get all this done. I mean, this really requires like me to, you know, to be uh, uh, doing all these marks. And it's like, oy vey, that's a lot to do. So, okay. Let's think about, uh, I had drawn a couple, let's see what size it is and all that stuff. Okay, cool. We're gonna make it full, cool. That's a good size. Okay, so we're gonna, yeah, we'll put that back there. We're gonna wish upon a star right there. And we're gonna say that that's a star. And good, we're now in that, that backing layer. So I'm gonna now add flow, field, um, fills to, To this here okay cool and uh yeah we're gonna think about just little pockets of areas that are gonna get these oculus these little eye spiral swirls okay and the reason i do these is that like this is where my my star for the night ha 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 is uh coming to fruition Okay, and I think I'll do one down here. That's fun. All right, great. And then um, the other thing too is I'm gonna think about um, is I've been doing where um, these are two dimensional like flat circles that are like facing you 100%, zero degrees, right, right, right at you, like that rather. So on the ground though, I'm gonna make it so it's gonna bend these. So I've been actually thinking about you know, how I make um, these oblate uh, shapes like this. See how that like supports the ground? Here, I'll do it. I'll do it in here. Like, cause when we lay down the shadow, same with the spoon, right? The spoon should have like a, right? not so, uh, not so flat because it's the ground. So I wanted to show it like as if it was invading our space. So, all right, now after I've laid down all these uh, fun uh, jammers, uh, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna come into the matzo ball layer and I've got the eraser on. I'm gonna get rid of that moon drawing just so I can see things kind of as they are. And then the salt, I know I'll come back with the salt later. So that's fine. Um, but what I want to do here before I proceed on this background is I'm actually going to edit something right quick. I'm going to switch the selection item here to freehand. And this is going to allow me to, with the pen now, draw this little stencil line. Okay. And then I click the arrow, which is the transform arrow. And I'm just going to pick up these pixels here. I'm going to put this moon up a little higher in the sky. Okay. Like right there. I just Since we've been doing it, I'm like, well, that's a much better place compositionally. So I might want to make that occur. So here it is, I did it. And then we're gonna do one more thing. We're gonna get this and up like that. Dope, dope, okay, thank you, cool. So now we can proceed with the, with the way that the flow field is built. So here we'll, uh, we'll make sure we have a wild wave in the middle, but what I'm trying to do here is to have these flow fields uh, coalesce, right? And they can, uh, I got to think about them like water. If these things were flowing water, you know, water is going to go somewhere. That's, you know, it's how you get leaks in your house and, um, you know, how rivers are formed when it needs to go down because of gravity, it's going to find a way, right? 
And uh, if it can't go down, it's going to wait and start to build up with, you know, a million of its other molecular friends. And then, whoosh, big splash down. So what I'm creating here are these perpendicular uh, kind of little tendrils, like rays of sunshine. And the reason I'm doing this is that, like, that perpendicularity where the... Um, the pattern of the one way flows against the pattern of the other way. It creates this like brick effect, right? Like a, a basket weave. And that in turn gives you contrast. That's how you get contrast in patterns, right? Is that like you change the overall direction of like where stuff's going. So um, that's one way, you know, but um, it's, uh, it's a great thing for me because I'm trying to like really reinforce this pattern as like being necessary to creating all the way that these things come together. So, um, you know, this environment, I want the environment to feel like it has a sense of, of realism, right? I, I want a little bit of not, um, not naturalism, but, um, uh, but realism, you know, like kind of brought to, to this, like as if a cartoon uh, item lived in your everyday world. So that's what I'm, I'm, playing with here is I'm playing with the aesthetic to push this item into your world slightly more right it's like uh, I guess the, the the silly example but like effective and, and smart is the idea of an emoji pillow if you have like one of those emoji pillows you've created a digital manifestation right uh, into the physical world so like that's that's actually really interesting. So if you take like a, think about that, you can take uh, things that exist only in the digital space or in a two dimensional space and then make them into three dimensional objects or, or on the surface of a three dimensional object. I mean, I think that's pretty awesome if you ask me. So um, I'm excited by that. I mean, I think our, our existence right now allows us to appreciate that because it's like oh that's new I've only seen that on the computer and then all of a sudden now you can hold um, the heart emoji in your hand or one of the like fun faces that's like oh you know that really like you you put on something that's like a picture of someone's cute cat and uh, yeah Okay, so more of these perpendicular. And see how I'm kind of like, wah, 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 wah. I'm, I'm going more sinusoidal, like sinus wave with uh, how this goes. Um, I'm doing a sine wave in like every direction, by the way. So if you're seeing this and you're like, not quite, Mike. Um, it's, uh, yeah, my geometry is totally funky going to... One zero negative one zero one zero negative one zero. Yeah. Cool. So this is my job right now is to fill in all of these elements, and uh, you know make this background like punch. So this is uh, this is exciting. Yeah. Right. And and same here. Like I can use this to have it flow into the matzo ball as well so it looks like that sky is like whoosh you know crashing into it it, it just helps create emphasis you know what i mean um I'm, a, I'm trying to avoid using outline um in the work and uh relying on pattern and shadow and highlight to uh help me with that definition that's really what i want to do So I got these grip tips. I'm happy with them. I feel like I have good control. My, uh, I used to have to tighten up my... I'm still drawing with my shoulder, which I've been really trying to uh, get good at. I've been... My lines are... Especially when it comes to doing things with pressure, I just appreciate that. When I'm too grippy, that's when things get wonky. M meaning when I'm too draw... When I'm too... Um, uh, driven, my drawing is driven by my wrist. That is just not good business for me.
go. This is wonderfully satisfying to <laughs> fill in all of these fun gaps and just create a flow field. You know, the flow field is really based on uh, like what I was describing before of like this uh, coalescing where things kind of like meander together. You know, this, these lines start to pull away and come together based on um, what we're illustrating as being a, a force, you know, a disturbance in the force. Uh, really a, a turbulence in a surface, a membrane, liquid, uh, fabric. I mean, just like stuff that stuff that flows, you know, just you get to see all this information. Really beautiful. So try to make these things as fun and as interesting as possible. So, yeah. Lately, I've been, uh, I spent some t uh, summer in the Long Island coast and uh, fell in love with waves again. Growing up, used to look at the ocean all the time, growing up in the Long Island area. And uh, man, oh man, super beautiful waves, big storms, winter waves are incredible to look at because it's like the water's so cold and uh, they just, they crush, you know, winter, a lot of winter waves do come from hurricanes and stuff that are happening now and are um, down in the tropics, still, still warm, but up north it's starting to get a little crisp. So all that, that winter weather is uh there we go there we go super satisfying y'all there we go getting this so i'm just you know kind of bisecting these uh these big open spaces because that allows me to start to you know cut these in half and create the attitude that these uh, will have, you know, these these little bendy areas. And that helps me kind of create that that space now. And I like to fluctuate as I create the lines. Whoop, 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 whoop. So this is cool. This is like a printing, painting method, you know, where you can do a scatter, scatter brush. I mean, that is a wonderful thing that mechanically would be very difficult to do. Yeah, it's been done, been done. I've attempted to make stencils and stuff too that have like allowed me to do a repetitive pattern of some sort, but it's, it doesn't allow this level of randomness and uh, organic kind of development, I would say, uh, with the way that it comes together meaning um, all these little dots scatter randomly every time I put them down. And anytime I draw one of these, oh, I got to remember to do that. Oh, crap. Now that I'm coming around the way here. Sorry, y'all. No, I did so much over there. Oh, that might be too late. Okay. There we go. Okay. I just wanted to now with the flow field, like change its geometry so that it, we understood it now to be hitting the ground. Um, that was the thing I went, oh, phooey. Just because of that reason. But we good. We good. We back on it. Yeah. Ugh. This is Pretzel Radio we got going on the stream. Um, Love these jams. This is really cool stuff. It's super chill. Exactly the vibe of what I got going on here. So, y'all, what's up? I am Mike Worth. And if you're just joining the stream and checking it out, we are drawing matzo ball soup at night. And uh, 
My artwork is, uh, if you, you're unfamiliar with what I'm doing or if you are a fan, uh, I make non-traditional Judaica, right? Cultural Jewish art. And um, yeah, here we're looking at the, the matzah ball, one of the great things, right? Like culture is, is aesthetics, it's uh, design, it's, uh, it's uh, food, fashion, uh, jewelry, uh, art. You know, these are, the, these are the things that I'm talking about when I talk about the, the culture. And uh, yeah, the language is, is beautiful. And so is this soup. Whoa. The matzo ball. And we're just starting in on detail. I've been at this for a while. I sketched out my whole routine of what I was going to do when I started. And then now we're working with the color flats and adding this uh, flow field here, this background that allows us to communicate the beauty behind this, right? The hidden energy. The invisible force that's like that drives this that makes this special right it's a uh, time with family time with others it's thoughtfulness inward looking right thinking about your community wondering how can we make things better right for ourselves for our loved ones and even those we don't know you know that's an important cultural value that oi i wish uh I could practice more and more and more every day. Yeah. Sweet. So, like I said earlier, is I'm trying to play with the um, with the flow fields so that they start to kind of m mirror the um, the ground somewhat. And um, by doing that, it's going to help really like set the the realism here in uh, somewhat of the aesthetic to have light and shade but clearly these are cartoons I mean I'm 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 building this up from cartoon world uh, by creating a a color flat uh, first a sketch you know the the drawing is not from real from life it's a contrived uh, drawing from my mind that really comes from just looking at the soup and remembering what it's like to be you know, a kid and sitting at the kids' table and really going, wow, I can't wait for the matzo ball soup. It's just always so good. It like comes around. I mean, it's still a little, it's still a little cold uh, in New York and the Northeast and um, other places where matzo ball soup is, is consumed often. And uh, oh, it's just a good, good thing. It's just... It's, yeah, they call it the Jewish penicillin matzo ball soup. It's just fantastic. And uh, a good friend of mine has uh, got this amazing deli that's uh, coming around Charlotte real soon. They're doing all these pop-ups. Uh, it's called Meshuggah. And uh, my good friend Rob there, we're, uh, we're real excited about doing things for our community and for our culture. And... Uh, Rob and I have a lot of discussions about food. I keep telling, oh man, all these things you're talking about I have in my head, I want to paint them. So he and I like to vibe on stuff. And like, it's funny because he talks about how he grew up, what his family did. And like, it's cool. It's, it's all from the same palette. Okay, cool. So you see now we've got this, this matzo ball going. And as you can see in the, in the pattern, you got to look a little close. But when you see in the pattern there that like there is... Um, moons and stars and all sorts of stuff so that's that's really great okay now what we want to do first is we start to shade this environment a little bit and i'm going to go find my soft brush here and turn that on and i'm going to go back now like down towards the background color maybe even like a little slightly darker but around that background color area no i want to keep it blue okay good so now with that soft brush i'm going to make it nice and big and i'm on the layer still behind i'm going to start to spray a little bit of a shadow okay I don't know if you can see it's starting to make its way in so that shadow is starting to come up and then what we'll do is we'll actually start to think about like creating like kind of like this actually we're gonna go the opposite way my bad bring this up like this 
cool. Okay, we'll darken this area in somewhat. And then we'll make sure right by our element, So just by using this softening uh, brush somewhat now, we've got this nice shadow starting to emerge under the bowl, right? And that actually really helps give the, the overall piece like a nice lift, right? It's like, there it is, popping, popping. And uh, <clears throat> we're going to now take this and go a little bit on the lighter side. I've been doing this lately. Not too light, but light enough here. Uh, let's get it more on the blue side, blue side. Here we go. Blue, blue, blue. And uh, in that same area now, we're going to do this. Watch. We're going to take the free hand, okay, and we're going to go like this. Oh, wait a minute. Selection. Free hand. And we're going to go. All right. And like that. Big old swoop like that, okay? Here's why. We want really this top part. And I'll show you how. We're going to like fade, make it big, and we're going to let it hang over the edge and just fade along that top line. One pass, two pass, like that. Okay. One more time. A little more pressure just to get that edge like a little hot with bright color. Okay. We don't need much. Let's come on back. Ooh, look at that. Whew. Matzo ball soup on the moon. <laughs> cool. All right. I like, I like where this is going. And, um, yeah, we got the shadow going on now. So like we're, we're setting up like a proper type of thing here. So I like this. And, uh, all right. Uh, next we want to think about, uh, and I did put shadow around the spoon. I was really excited about that. We want to start to think about going back to this flow field brush. And now we're going to look for a, we're going to go to like this yellow, which is the yellow we're going to use. We're going to slide the slider all the way down to like it's kind of, uh, you know, darkest yellow, right? Like a real dingy yellow. And what we're going to use for that is uh, the same with the flow field brushes. We're going to start to now put, and actually, um, I'm going to jump back. I'm going to lower the opacity a little bit on this because I want it to blend a little bit. It just, it helps. But when I lay this color in now, what this does, you'll see it starts to build up on top of itself too as I lay it on top of one another. But this, y'all, is how I create the radiance inside the moon and inside the, um, the other elements. By putting this, this uh, neutral tone, I'm going to then make it so that I could uh, support the color, the yellow color that's about to sit on it. And if I just do yellow on top of there, it's, it's a little like stark. It looks a little contrived computer kind of. I guess I went over my star there, but that's all good. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. Yeah, I like, uh, I like where that's going. And um, by getting this brown in here and mixing all that stuff, what it lets me do now is I can go up to the yellow and still with the same transparency and stuff like, check this out, I could just come in. Just like little touch, touches, 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 tiny touches. Here we go. I'll admit the grain's a little bit big for that like tiny of a circle, but it's all good. Here we go. Yes. Okay, little, little fleckies, little fleckies. Okay, and yeah, as I start to like add more to the, you can see it's like, it's there and it's not. So that's how we set these, these elements up to make this really work out. So what's up y'all, Mike Worth here. Welcome, welcome to the stream. Uh, we're painting matzo ball soup today in this, uh, in my cartoonish starry night inspired style. And uh, we're using Procreate and we're working high res. So we are limited on layers. So I'm doing a lot of selection tricks that really get you um, able to control how you're working with, um, to do shading and that sort of stuff, like and build a painting. A lot of it comes from doing the mural work that I do and the painting work that I do. 
So, all right, we just laid in the, the star elements and whatnot. Really, really cool. And uh, we're working still. We only get two layers because it's a high-res dock. I can't make a layer uh, on top of this. Otherwise, it'll say I can't, right? And that's because we're working such high resolution. All right. Um, we got some great background elements going. Um, we're going to paint some salt. Yeah, let's get that salt in there. We said we wanted to do that. Um, so lately I've been adding uh, elements that I've been reading about. And I read about, you know, obviously salt um, is in so many Jewish stories. And I just thought, oh man, what a, what a great element to add to, uh, to the piece. You know, it would just be fun to have it in that space. There we go. Oh. No, nope. <laughs> I guess I gotta. Oh, it's because it, I'm painting on top of the, the flow field, so I gotta, I gotta fill it here. I mean, it is technically a foreground element, so I should have maybe put it on the layer above. But it's all right. In fact, I will. You know why? Because I want some of that shadow around it. So yeah, we're gonna back it up just slightly. We're gonna go to the matzo ball layer here. All right, and then let's have at it. So back to a decent size. Okay, it's a lumpy, lumpy mound. <laughs> cool. And now I should be able to, boop, there we go. Nice, fill it up with the, with the way I need. So that's my uh, mound of salt that I want to have in the, in the piece. It's rather big right now, so we're going to use that freehand selection again and just make it a little on the smaller side. Yeah. And then we'll add the things there to make it look elemental and you know, doing what it is that we need it to do. And because it's a flat, we can tap it and uh, that'll allow us to, you know, have it um, be selectable, fillable, shadable, all that good stuff. Okay. All right, let's keep moving on this. Now we can start to shade uh, the different parts of uh, the bowl. So here's where this gets fun. So let's start with the matzo ball itself. Let's go back to automatic. There's the matzo ball, it's selected. All right, and now we can eyedropper color from here and start to think about, well, what colors do we want to have? So I'm going to, I'm going to get a little bit more. Oh, nope, not that. Let's eyedropper again. Good. I did pop it open and let's get just slightly shadowed there. And I'm looking for something fun and textured. So I'm going to use this brush that's called Melaleuca. Okay. And it's an iPad brush. It's a really good one. And okay. So the moon is to the, to the right. So let's, uh, Let's start to now think about this object of having some dimension, right? And notice I'm using that undercolor to my advantage. There we go, right? I painted in one gray layer, and I'm coming in with another gray layer and letting that Melaleuca just flow on this. Okay. I'm looking for the highlight to be um, more on the outside. All right, I'll punch up this and I'll make this smaller now that I'm getting towards like kind of the edge. Yeah. All right, not, not touching it as much. Sometimes I need to just go over and just do a general blend. It's fine just to kind of keep it smooth and flowing. Let's get a little darker. I think we can. Hey, nice. Now we're talking. All right, that's way too intense. Yeah. Okay, and then I want a little bit of shadow here and there just to, you know, help help kind of say, yeah, there's vegetables right here. Sweet. So, you know, fairly soft. Just kind of help this blend out a little bit, you know. And we are going to come back in with some, uh, with some, some highlight to make this thing a little bit more less uh, on the contrasty side, but... Yeah, right. This is uh, this is doing well. This is fun. Um, on the opposite side of things, we'll go back to the bright, bright yellow. In fact, we'll go like a little on the yellower side, and then we'll come in and we'll say like this in a smaller brush. Okay, and you see now we can start to build the highlight, right? And that allows us to kind of cut backwards.
Okay. Cool. Cool. So you see like already the matzo ball is like picking up some of that highlight and we're, we're totally controlled now in this space. Um, let's play a little bit with uh, some flow field stuff. So what I can do is I can take some of this shading color and really lightly now just weave in just some flow fields kind of across the, the bottom of it, right? Um, do a couple in here, really nice. Uh, maybe have it come in a little, little darker. There we go, yeah. Flow field, hey, hey, cool. Nice, and then the same thing on the bright side, we can bring it all the way up hot and then start to play with how flow fields are on here, right? Just making this thing ever so much more magical. All right, the flow field gives it the motion lines, right? It's like really, it becomes alive at that point and that's really what we love, that's what we want. Yeah, on the matzo ball. Okay, I think we can undo the matzo ball now that we've we've set it up. So excited, excited about that. Um, let's focus on the uh, the carrot. Okay, so we got the carrot going, and then uh, I gotta now work it out so that the carrot has uh, some shadow on the left. So let's go over to let's eyedropper the carrot, get its color. Go a little darker on here because we're going to have a little shadow on the right. I slid that. Let me eyedropper it again. Okay, that. Okay, just there. Good. And uh, Mela Luca. Okay, and I want to think about. Round, so it's like its shading facets will kind of spin with this. There we go. Nope. Okay. Cool. Uh, and we'll do the same thing on the brighter side. Is you know come in and make sure that this side gets. Oh, actually no. We want to make sure that like this or this area gets the love. We'll play with the uh, flow fields on that. Okay. Okay, cool. Okay, switch over to the flow field brush. And then like we said, we can play with uh, some of these. Let's make it a little smaller, the flow field. Let's go a little brighter. Okay. Yes. Nice. Uh, yeah. Again, use, using flow fields to help like shape contours and. Okay, and uh, the celery, we got to think about the different facets in here. So uh, we're going to do, let's see, we're all, oh yeah, we're all one layer. Okay, yeah, we'll go with the automatic. Okay, we got that set. That feels good. And then we want to, um, let's see, let's get in the paint, eyedropper the green, and then find a lighter green. All right, to help us define this uh, face, everyday round brush here. Let's see, so there's gonna be a, uh, like this. If you know what I mean. A top piece. No, okay. Like this. Cool. We'll go one step in the middle. There's all these facets on celery, so it's like, 
it needs to have a couple of greens to make it really work as an element. Um, oh gosh, I guess I should trim that, huh? <laughs> well, all right. And let's see. Okay, we'll get that. And then now we'll add darkness. Go back to Melaleuca. Okay, and now, oh, it's way too much, but right idea. I see that like comes in, creeps in now. And it's looking real enough, you know what I mean? Actually, I should uh, do this first. Okay. Okay, we're gonna lower the everyday round brush somewhat and we're gonna do this kind of texture on here. Cool, all right, now we'll uh, go back to Melaleuca, go back to the dark side and we're gonna paint this. I'm doing this off the cuff, so I'm figuring this out one step at a time. Okay. Ooh, nice. It's doing doing pretty good. Hopefully it's not too dark. Might need to be like that's that's it. Yeah. Okay. Sweet. Okay, cool. So these are looking like now they've got like the right elements in the soup. You know, we're still working off of the same lighting source, so like that's a that's a really good thing. Okay, all right. So let's now automatic grab the bowl and let's do the bowl part, or rather, let's do the interior of the bowl. There we go. And we'll say uh, let's grab this color like that. All right, and then we'll get um, yeah, we'll do the mella which allows us to now going to yep, paint, we can come in and start to form this up. There we go. Okay, great. I'll make it too dark because then it's like that makes sense. That's great. And then uh, here we'll go to automatic. There for the bowl, we want to do the bowl itself. And uh, I'm going to use light blue to help get some shading on this. Uh, actually, let's go to this darker blue, but like lighter, lighter spray. And uh, yeah, we'll do the Melaleuca. Oh, I already touched it there. Shouldn't. All right, way too intense. Let's bring that down. Good deal, good deal. Shading is looking nice. And then we'll go up here and we'll start to put in just a little bit of something coming off the matzo ball, right? Because we want to break it so that the there's a little bit of shadow on that rim. There we go. Sweet. Yeah, that'll do it nicely. Wicked. Y'all, this is great. We are like banging this out. Okay, now we can hit this spoon. Go automatic on that and then we can have fun sampling that color and going for the darker tone all right help make that spoon have a pit
cool. All right. And, uh, oh, he's looking good. Okay. The other thing, too, is the surface of the liquid. So if we go automatic here now, we have just that selected. So you see how this is all, like, beautiful, perfect? I could just select each individual one. Whew, magic. All right. Let's uh, color sample that. Okay. And then, yeah, do some mellow. See how this works. Let's make that brighter. Yeah. Let's make some of this part of the suit bright. Some of this part of the suit dark. A little more, a little more chickeny. Yeah. Just to help it sound. There we go. play with these flow fields here using the to get a nice texture inside of here there we go there we go just do what I need to in there and it's all good there we go yeah And then I'm gonna take a little Melaleuca and just, uh, we're gonna spray just a tiny bit of shadow. Just along the soup edge here. So, you know, there's, there's an object here. A little too much. All right, same with this. So this is this is doing some good, good, good. I made that shadow a little too dark, so it looks like the soup, the thing is sitting on top of the. Here, we're gonna do a little surgery here. Let's see if I can make that make that work out. Let's blend that edge some. Yeah, there we go. It just helps. A little too much there. Okay, let's get some shines in here. Got a little lens flare, we'll turn that up to white. And then now we're gonna get that hot. There we go, hot. Beautiful. It's a little too intense. <laughs> Good, okay. Oh, we didn't work on this salt. So here, let's get that in there automatic and uh, paint. And we're just gonna get the base color and then find a darker hue and then use Melaleuca. And we'll, we'll paint the under part of it so that way it feels like it's got a, uh, undo the thing and we'll add <laughs> we got to add one more obligatory shine to uh to that boom and boom okay y'all this is sweet okay let's get a let's get a uh where is it uh no uh, elements yeah let's get a cloud here and nope bigger Out 
is a hit or miss. Okay, that's enough. I don't want to play with it too much. All right. Um, ooh, and uh, where is the... Uh, yeah, the smoke. Let's see what we can do with this. That's so nice. Okay, here, we're going to make that brighter. Watch this, y'all. This is so nice. Ah. Oh, it's white. I want it uh, gold. Okay. All right. A little too intense here. We'll take it down. Okay. Let's see. See why well, I want this for spawn. Let's see if we can make the paper. There we go. That's what we want. Okay. Hmm. Let's see. Maybe I make it come off the. the same thing right yeah okay cool good deal all right y'all this is good let's sign it up we're gonna go to mike's brush every day round like a trusty marker and we're gonna go a little too thin we're gonna go mike too thick ah oh, okay thinner out mike Looks like a kid wrote it. There we go. Worth. And all right, y'all. That's it. So let's check it out real quick. Check the time lapse. We took a drawing of matzo ball soup. We sketched it all out, right? We made sure that we thought about where elements were going to go. And then we color flatted, right? We filled all of our items with um, full painted areas so that way we could use them later as selections. We're working high res. I went in here with a flow field, right? And started to fill this background so we could truly make it a Mike Worth matzo ball soup at night. Haha. -ha. And uh, yeah, this took a minute. We, we laid in that kind of swooping area in the background so that way it felt like there was a, a ground. Uh, I used the the uh, kind of neutralized mixture of yellow and blue to get that under color so I could paint some really effective stars that they pop out. And then we went in with selections and just using the automatic with those color fields, we're able to select each area and then shade them and highlight them accordingly and add some fun flow field textures and whatnot. And, you know, we even had a little fun with some smoke and uh, y'all, we, uh, we made it happen. So y'all, this has been a lot of fun. Thank you so much for riding with us the whole time. I got like a follower who is a true hero. So you are a model American and uh, I appreciate you. We are, uh, yeah, we're going to put this up live on the store. It's a high res doc from here. I would output it as a PDF and um, yeah, it's going to be up on the store. So y'all, you have been truly, truly amazing. Um, yeah, we're going to say goodbye. Peace out y'all next time. <laughs>